Hello, Jason here. Today I'm going to introduce you to the world of After Effects. It can be daunting when you first open up the program, so I'm just going to take you through some of the main aspects and tools. So when you first open up After Effects, this is what you'll see. If yours looks slightly different in any way, it might be worth going to Window at the top, Workspace, and just selecting Default. If you're still missing a panel, you can again go to Window at the top and you'll see all the active panels with a tick next to them. Just click on the ones without a tick to have them show up and vice versa for panels you don't want. So up here in the top left, you will see the Projects panel. This is where all our footage, assets and compositions live. To bring in any assets, you can go to File, Import, File or you can take your window and you can simply click and drag into that panel and it will show up here. I like to keep this panel as tidy as possible as it can quickly become messy and hard to find anything you need. So along the bottom here you'll see this button which is called create a new folder. If we click on that surprisingly it will create a new folder. So if we call this assets, click off it, click that same button again and call this one comps, short for compositions. Then those are our two main folders and we will drag our asset into the assets folder. You can also create subfolders for footage or images, audio, etc. So the next step is to create a composition. This is where all our animations happen. So we can either down here next to the folder button we clicked earlier, we can either click that there or we can go up to the top, composition, new composition. This will open up a new window where we can choose the settings required for our project. Ask your client if they have a particular size or frame rate they need for the video, but if you're unsure you can't really go wrong with 1920 by 1080. This is also the correct aspect ratio for TV and I'll just leave the frame rate at 24 and the duration I'm going to make 30 for now. So you can make that whatever you need and the rest can be left as is. You can also change any of these at a later date or time if needed. Then lastly, let's name our composition. Let's just call this composition one. You can call that whatever you want and you can also rename later on if needed. So let's just click OK and you'll see it appear in the left in our projects panel. So I'm just going to drag that into our comps folder to keep it nice and tidy. And if it's not already open, just double click on that and it will open up in your composition window and your timeline along the bottom. Currently there's nothing in our composition which is why it is blank. So let's drag in our footage that we brought in earlier. You can either drag it straight down here or into the window itself. Let's just drag it into the window. And mine fits nicely in my 1920 1080 frame, but if yours happens to be bigger or smaller, there are two ways you can change the scale. Click the top corner and then while holding shift, you can just drag it to the correct size. Or down here in the timeline, click this arrow here, let it drop down and again next to transform and it will open up all the properties for this layer. We want the scale, so let's click on our scale and let's just, using our up and down arrows, scale that down to the correct size. I know that needs to be 100, so I'm just going to type in 100 and hit enter. So just over here to the right is our timeline. Our current time indicator is here. You can click on this blue arrow and you can scrub along to watch our video, or we can drag it to the beginning and hit spacebar on our keyboard, then that will play. It might not play at the correct time. As you will see, this green bar indicates what has pre-rendered and let's, let's drag this back to the beginning and it should now just for this green 
section play at correct speed. So I'll just hit spacebar and it's playing at the speed it should and it pre-renders just the head as we can see. Okay, so now let's add a shape to our composition. So up here, you'll see a square rectangle tool. If you click and hold on that, it will open up a drop down where you can see a few other options of shapes. I'm just going to leave it on rectangle, so I'll click on that. And then I can draw anywhere in my composition to create my rectangle or square. A square, if I was to hold down shift, it will keep the proportions the same, creating a square. I'm just going to make a square, small square there. If you were to double click on this square, it will create a shape of whatever selected, the exact size of our composition that we can then change. So if that was to be a circle, double click, it will create, it will create a circle, the exact size of our composition. I'm just going to delete that and stick with our square. Just drop that into the middle there. So let's create some movement. As before, let me just hide this. As before, on our shape layer here, we're going to do the drop down and then drop down our transform. And this time, I want the position. So with my blue marker, I'm just going to make sure that's at the very start. And I'm going to click this little stopwatch next to position. I'm going to click that. Then I'm going to move forwards two seconds or so. And then I'm going to click and drag and move this to the right. Once you've created that first keyframe, anytime you move this at a different point within the timeline, it will automatically create a new keyframe. So do be aware that whenever I move this, it will create a new keyframe sometimes when I don't want a keyframe in that position. So we have our two keyframes here. If I wanted to adjust either of these two keyframes, I just need to make sure my marker is on top of this keyframe, and then I can move the layer without creating a new keyframe. A quick tip to make sure you're on a keyframe is the shortcut J and K. If you press K, this marker will jump to the next keyframe to the right. And if you press J, it will jump to the next keyframe to the left. So K, J, K, J. So if I can't quite get this on top of that marker, a uh, keyframe, sorry, I'll just hit K and it will jump onto that keyframe. So if I was to now play this through by hitting spacebar, you'll see that square moving from left to right, like so. You will notice that the shape moves in a linear motion, as in it starts at a set speed and continues at that exact speed until it reaches its destination. So what we can do is highlight both our keyframes, like so, by dragging over them both or clicking on one, holding shift, and clicking on the other. And then we right click, go down to the bottom, key, keyframe assistant, easy ease at the top. And you'll now notice that there is a bit of easing between the keyframes, as in it takes a, a few frames to gather its speed, speeds up in the middle and then slows down just before it reaches its destination. This is a much more natural way for something to move in the real world. So it does help a lot when it comes to animation. We can go one step further even, and if you were to highlight these keyframes and click on this button here, which is for the graph editor, click on that. And I'm just going to use this little zoom here. So if I drag that to the right, click and drag on that, you can zoom in slightly. And we're just going to adjust the speed of our easing. Just double check by clicking down here that you are using the speed graph. If not, click on edit speed graph. Make sure you've got a tick next to that. And then let's just highlight our first keyframe. And let's drag this across like so. And let's drag this one on the right to the left. The steeper the curve, the faster the movement. So it will start off really slow here, gather some pace in the middle, and then really slow down towards the end. If I just play that through, you should see that a bit clearer. 
There you go. Let's play that again. You'll see it starts really slow until about here. Then it will gather its speed until its maximum speed here in the middle. Then it begins to slow down as it reaches its final keyframe. You can do all the adjustments you want here. So if you wanted it to, for example, start really fast and then slow down, you would just create a curve that looks like this where it reaches its top speed really quickly and then slowly slows down. Like that. So there you'll notice it gathers its top speed right at the start and then slows down. So I'm just going to put that back to how it was, where the maximum speed was in the middle. See how that looks. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. Right, okay, so let's click on this button again to go back out of our graph editor. And let's add some text. So up here, two to the right from where our shape layer was, we're gonna click on this T. And then we're gonna click anywhere within our composition window. And then type in any words or a sentence that we need. So let's just move this down to the middle for now. And on the right, you will see a character panel and a paragraph panel. Again, if you're missing these, let's go to window, character. If there's no tick, just click and it will appear. So come over here to our character. And this is where we change our our fonts, our colors, our weights, sizing, etc. So I'm just going to put that back to white. Uh, just make that a light in weight. And then our paragraph, you can choose whether it's centered, center aligned, left aligned, or right aligned. I'm just going to leave ours center aligned for now. So what I thought we could do is use this square to wipe on our text. So firstly, I'm just going to adjust the keyframes of our, of our square just to make it wipe over the text a bit closer. So I'm going to drag to the beginning where our first keyframe is. So I'm just gonna come down to the position and I'm going to move this to here to just to the left of our text. Then I'm going to hit K on the keyboard, jump to our second keyframe. Then I'm going to move the X position to here, to just before our text there. And if I was to make sure again, my markers on top of a keyframe, I'll just hit J and K to double check. I'm going to select both and now in the position, I'm going to move it up slightly. With both selected, it will affect both. So that Y position has changed on both keyframes. If I was to have just one selected and move it up, you will see that the starting point is still lower than the second keyframe. I'm just gonna undo that and put it back there. And also what I'm going to do actually is highlight both and I want the square to start on the left. No, sorry, start on the right and finish on the left. The opposite of what's happening right now. So I am going to right click, go to our keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. And that will just switch those two keyframes around like so. So I'll go back to the beginning, press space. So you would have noticed that the text is on top of this square. That's because it is on top of the shape layer square in our timeline. This is done in order of whatever's at the top is on the top here. So if I was to drag the text below that shape layer, it will disappear behind the square. And that is what we're looking for for this particular animation. So now I'm going to add a mask onto our text to create the wipe from the square. So let's click on our text layer Go up to layer at the top, down to mask, new mask. 
and that will create a mask the exact size as our layer. So I am going to double click on that mask and just expand it slightly just to give us a bit more room. There you go. And then the shortcut to reveal keyframes on the layer is have that layer selected and press U on the keyboard. So I'm going to do that now on our shape layer. Then I press K to jump to the second keyframe. And this is the point we want our mask as it is, as we see it right now in this current state. So with this text layer selected, let's click this arrow and you will see above transform, there is a masks layer. Let's click the arrow next to it. And again, to expand our mask one, and we want to keyframe our mask path. So this stopwatch next to mask path, and it will create a keyframe here, exactly where we want it. So let's double click on our mask, and let's just move the whole thing to the right to about here. And that would have automatically created a keyframe for us. So if we now play that through, it does reveal our text, but as you will have noticed, there is a slight delay and that is because of our easing on this first layer and our text layer has no easing. So let's highlight both keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And we're just going to do the exact same process we did with the shape layer. So let's click here on the graph editor, select one keyframe, drag it in, and the other. And then we're going to play that again to see if that's worked. Not quite, it's almost there. So you do need to tweak this slightly. It needs to be a bit slower there, faster there. And there you go, that is revealing our text nicely. A better way to do that easing to make sure they match is to do them at the same time. So let's just reset these. If you highlight all the keyframes, right click keyframe interpolation. Let's change both of these to linear. Click OK and that will reset them to linear. So now it will wipe it perfectly, but again, it will be linear with no easing. So let's uh, select all our keyframes again. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's go back to our graph editor. Select our end keyframes, move that in. Select our first ones, move that in. And now the easing should be identical. And there you go. Okay, so let's move on to pre-compositions or pre-comps. These are compositions within compositions. So if we collapsed all our layers, then if we selected our shape layer and our text layer, holding shift as you click between, right click and go down to pre-compose. Let's click on that. Let's just call this text wipe. Click OK. And now those two layers are embedded in this pre-composition, which you'll see has also created a new composition up here in our projects panel. Let's go out of our graph editor. So now we can move this anywhere we like. We can scale it down. Let's put that here, scale it up a bit. So all the contents within this pre-comp are now one entity and can be moved around and treated as such. You can even create a new composition. Let's go to File, Import File. Let's just bring in this video here. Let's drag this onto this composition button. That will, that will automatically create a composition with the exact dimensions of this video. So let's just do that just for speed. And here you go. Got a video here. And then let's drag our text wipe pre-composition on top. 
Let's scale that down. It's not the, it's not the easiest color, color to see, but there it is in our second composition. If I was to then double, double click on that composition, here's our two layers with our keyframes that we can change. So let's just make it a bit quicker and change the color of that text and the character. Let's just make that to blue. Yeah. Okay. And then let's go back to our first composition, the one we created first. You will see the text has changed to blue and the, and the animation has sped up as we just did. And then our second composition, the exact same changes have been made. So it's a way of having one set of layers that can be changed, but then we'll update in all the compositions they're involved in. So let's go back to our composition one and let's change that text back to white quickly. There you go, change that back to white. Let's go back to our composition one. And let me just show you how to render this animation. So let's go up to composition, add to render queue. And here's our render queue. Sometimes this might pop up down here. If you click on it on the tab and drag up, I like to have it up here just because it's a lot easier to see when it's full screen rather than down here hidden away. So firstly, click on this lossless, this blue lossless. That will open up a output module settings window. I'm not sure what the best settings are if you're on a PC, but, but if you're on a Mac like me, then I'd recommend selecting QuickTime in this format here, QuickTime. And then in this format options, I tend to I tend to like Apple ProRes 422 HQ. It's not overly big and it's good quality, so I tend to go for that one, as do most of my clients. So it's a good one to have and use. So I'm going to go into click OK. We don't want to resize it. Channels are OK, RGB. That's all fine. So I'm happy there. If you want audio or if there is audio on your video, make sure it's on on or auto. Auto just means if there's audio detected, it will include it. But if you don't want it off, so I tend to leave it on auto, click OK. And then click here, which is our composition name. That will take you to a new window where you can choose the destination and name of your render. Then after that, you would just click render in the top right here. And that's it. I hope what we've been through today has been helpful and helped you understand the basics of After Effects. Good luck exploring the program. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.